This episode is brought to you by Leo Bato and Associates, ang realtor na pato. This episode is brought to you by Dr. Lourdes Capulong. Since you mentioned angels and devils, yeah, you're a songwriter, solid songwriter. What inspires you, or what inspired you to write those songs? And you've been in, you've been doing music all your life. Yeah, yeah, all my life. So let's 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 start with with that song. Right. I mean, what's what inspired you to write that specific song? That specific song. So, um, well. It, from a lyrical standpoint, you know, that part of it was, it was, well, kind of came out of that idea of angels or devils is, is kind of that, that, that angel or devil that's inside each of us. Right. Yes. And they're always, you know, my experience is they're always kind of fighting for who has control. Right. And, you know, I mean, I grew up being taught to do the right thing and to be kind and, but you know, sometimes it's hard. Sometimes, you, you know, we make bad decisions or you might be having a bad day. Um, struggling a bit, stress, those kind of things, depression. There's a lot of stuff that we deal with, right? So it's uh, this song was just about that internal struggle that we have, you know, to try to do the right thing and, and get through life in the best way possible. And sometimes it's hard. Did you know that it was going to be a hit? No, 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 no. I mean, it's interesting. I mean, the song originally started because Jim, the keyboard yeah. player in the band, had brought me the chords to the chorus, and and he was playing it for me, and I'm listening to him, and I'm like, oh, it's pretty cool. I'm like, it sounds like Charlie Brown's parents to me. Yeah, you know, I don't know if I totally get it. And it took me a while to get my head around it, and then I kind of finally, and and the other guys in the band were pretty keen, like, oh, that's really cool. You should do something with that. So then I I took it home and. And then Angels of Devils came out of that. So oh my I God. Just finished writing it. So, um, but it's, it's a great song. The, the recording of it that we did as a band on Opaline 2 was, right? was really magical also. So, cause I think I've written songs that I, oh, I thought like, oh, this is one of the best songs I've written. And then we've gone in the studio and recorded it and it just didn't translate well, you know? Can you explain that to me and to the audience? Because yeah. it really happens sometimes to the point like the demo is actually better, better yeah. than the actual yeah. recording. The crappy demo that you recorded in your, you know, garage or whatever is so much superior. Um, Why does that happen? You know, it's just because I mean, music is so emotional, and um, you know, it's it's hard. I mean, I think uh, what works the best is when you're able to capture that emotion and also have you know, be in a nice studio with good microphones and those things, so sonically it sounds really good, so you can hear everything well right. and balanced, right? But at the same time, if you have to choose, sometimes the the crappier sounding version, but has all that heart, heart. and emotion, Ooh. is you know I'm working on a song right now, um, it for for a new album, and I had sung the demo to it a few years back, and I, I mean I sung on, I was playing guitar and singing at the same time, and it and I was out of tune and uh. blah blah blah, but the vocal is so good that I did that day, I can't beat it, and it's driving me crazy, like it. Cause I listened to that demo and it's like, I want to cry. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Oh my God, that's so beautiful to my ears, you know? And then I sing it now and it doesn't matter how hard I try. It's just, it's just not quite there. So I'm not quite sure what I'm. So saying. what, what do you do when, when, when those things happen? Do you, do you, um, compromise yourself to hit the, the release date or mm. do you have to make a tough decision? You know what? It's not working. I'm not putting it out. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sometimes, <clears throat> sometimes I'll set it aside if it's just not there. Um, because I've, I've recorded en enough songs that, that w should have been better than they were. Like they just didn't translate well at that time. And I probably should have just not released it and come. So there are songs, uh, sorry, uh, yeah. this is wow. So there are songs out on streaming platforms that when you listen to them, you're like, could have done better. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. Definitely. While, while us mere mortals go, wow. <laughs> Well, I mean, I don't know. I, I think that, um, I mean, I, I guess it's hard to say because you can't hear what's in my head. I mean, right. because sometimes I, I usually hear how the song is supposed to be. And then it's, and then the job is trying to figure out how to, to capture it that way so that I can play it for other people and they can hear it in the way I'm hearing it. But sometimes that doesn't happen. You know, sometimes it doesn't matter what you do. It's, it's just, and they might love it, but it, to me, I'm like, it's just, it, 
I know it's, it sounds good, but it could be so much better if I could just figure out how to do this or that. Now, is, do you think it's subjective or objective or both at the same time with regard to the, um, the bar raised in your head? <laughs> um, I don't know. It's hard to say because it's such an emotional thing yeah. that, that I'm feeling, right? So it's not, it, you can't quantify it. You can't say that all we need to do is just do X or Y and that'll fix it. It's just kind of like, that's not, that's not it. You know, that's not it. I don't know what to do. Sing it again. Play it again. You know, try. I mean, like Charlie Brown's Parents, which was on the Dishwalla's very first album, Pet Your Friends. That song, the demo for that song is probably why we got signed. Because the mm. demo to that song on that cheap old cassette yeah. tape that we had done was so good. But I mean, it's it sounds, you know, like a garage band, you know, it doesn't really, sonically doesn't sound that great, but there's something really exciting about it when you hear it. So we went to go record it. And so we were thinking, oh, this is going to be, it's going to be amazing. Because imagine what that song will sound like recorded yes. well with a producer and blah, 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 all this stuff. But we recorded it and sonically it sounds really good, but there's something wasn't quite right. So we ended up so much so that we decided to go and try recording it again. So we went to a different place with a different person and tried to record it again. Still was never quite there. Doesn't have the same magic as the... So what's on, what's on the Better Friends album? Is the version that's really good, but not as good, doesn't have the magic that our demo has. Isn't that album celebrating its what? How many years now? 20, uh, 28. 28, 28 years, right? 28 years, yeah. Better Friends. Counting blue cars. You, you, <laughs> I'm getting old. What's yeah, going on? Oh my God. <laughs> Woo! Count, counting blue cars. You wrote that song. Yeah. yeah. I really want, really like to meet her. Mm. Yeah. How did that lyric? We talked about this on the virtual, but yeah. to the to a wider audience, when you were when when you were, when you were writing the lyrics to to the song. What were you expecting? Were you expecting people to go, ah, this is, people are going to talk about this? Or You know, I didn't think about that at, at all. It didn't even cross my mind once. It was one of those things where I was writing this song about this kid's kind of, I guess, spiritual journey. <laughs> he was trying to figure out what, what you know, how, why are we here? What is, what is this thing life? And get a better understanding. And, you know, he's going from, in my mind, going from one side of town to the <laughs> other, right? You know, um, and then I flipped the pronoun, which, yeah. you know, right now in the States, especially a big pronoun thing going on, right? right? Um, and, you know, I was like, okay, cool, next. And went on to the next song and really didn't think about it that much. And then it was one of those things, it was about, oh, Charlie Brown's Parents is going to be our first single, yes. right? And then that just didn't really translate. So it ended up being Counting Blue Cars. But you never, you never, Counting Blue Cars was never part of, was never meant to be the first, uh, no, to be the no. hit single. In my mind, that was not a single. So I, I'm not a, I shouldn't be the person picking singles apparently because that <laughs> song was huge. But I mean, in my mind, I was like, well, it's a, you know, it's good, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it sounds okay. It's a good song. And because um, originally we had another song called Haze that was on the album that was our first single, but it didn't translate very well. So the, the label decided to pull it really quickly mm. and pretend it never happened. And then and then decided to release Counting Blue Cars. And a lot of people, the label felt like, this is a great song. Did, they, could do did well. they meet with you when they said, did they actually sit you guys down and say, and said, uh, we're releasing Counting Blue Cars or they just did it on their own? And Well, yeah, there were, there were <clears throat> three camp, there were three different camps, groups of people in the label that one wanted to release, you know, one group of people wanted to release Charlie Brown's Parents, mm -hmm. one Hayes and one Counting Blue Cars. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so the Hayes group won first. They didn't do very well. Then they decided to go with County Blue Cars. I mean, a lot of, we were on tour, so a lot of this was kind of out of our control. Right, right. And, and to be honest, I wouldn't have wanted to make that decision. I was yes. so young and really didn't have any. So, okay, idea. so you were on tour. Hayes was out. Yeah. That, that wasn't really um, creating much of a dent like Counting Blue Cars did, right? Yeah. So you were on tour. Yeah. Who are you touring with at this point? I think we were touring with... Uh, was this a Matchbox 20 tour? Not no, yet. no. It was a, I think it was Better Than Ezra. Better Than Ezra. Yeah. Mm, they were good. So yeah, I'm just they, kidding. They, they, <laughs> no, good, good band, man. They are good band. You got... <laughs> like a, <laughs> the single, right? Good. So anyway... Yeah, so it was good. <laughs> <laughs> so, it was really good. What was your single? 
Oh, it was, it was good. Yeah. <laughs> it was okay. No, it was actually good. <laughs> so shout out to the guys from Better Than Ezra. Uh, yeah, Kevin, I so. love them. I, I digress, right? But yeah, no, good my, first, my first Pentium was the IBM Aptiva. And I'd go to the good guys. And they were all over the demo. For oh, the, were they? Yeah, oh, that's, that's so cool. Because it was good. That was uh, the yeah. the demo of the IBM Aptiva, right, yeah, but which that makes was, sense. Yeah, I digress. But yeah. So anyway, yeah. you guys were on tour with Better Than Ezra. Yeah. Finally, in '96, Counting Blue Cars come out comes out. Mm -hmm. Was it '96 or '95? They released it in '95. '95, but it really didn't start taking off till '96. And, and you guys were on tour. We were on tour, yeah. So did you notice the sudden influx of fans because of this? Because this. Well, you know, it's interesting. I, you didn't really notice it as much because we were always opening up for someone. Ah. So if there were more people at the at the show, I just attributed that to being the they're come to see the other band. I'm like, wow, they're better than other guys. They're doing great, you know. Um, I, you know, so because we were, you know, we'd be playing with the Goo Goo Dolls or right. Tonic or you know Cheryl Crow. We were on tour with quite a bit. So you, you just, you just. We were always opening up for them, so I never really thought, you know, if the room was full, it was, probably wasn't us, it was probably them. When did you feel that it was you guys? Um, I, uh, that's a good question. I think that maybe when we did, um, we won a Billboard Award in 96, and uh, we were, well, we were asked to be on the show because we were nominated for Rock Song of the Year. Yeah. Which was like, it took yeah. me a second for it to sink in and the people to the labor are like, you have no idea. This is a big deal. Yeah, you know, big I mean, deal. the fact that you're nominated is like, you're on the radar. This is really good. And I was like, Oh wow. Okay. And, um, it wasn't until I walked out on the stage <laughs> to play in front of, you know, 28, 30 million people live. And it's like the front row is like sting, you know, oh. uh, Mariah Carey, you know, it's like, uh, um, Santana, it, I mean, it was, it was no, that, that was your pitch me moment. That, this is the front row. <laughs> LL Cool J. And it was like, are you kidding me? So yeah. Alan Grimeyer. So yeah. I just gave you front row. So I, you know, I remember being like, this is weird. Cause I'm used to seeing those yeah. shows yeah. and, and you know, the cameras will pan around to the front, to the, you know, the, the front yes. rows and you'll see all those people sitting there. But then I'm standing on the stage looking at them from that same perspective. How did it, it was feel? Really, it was scary at first. But then, but, and luckily just kind of, you know, the song started and we kicked in and we just started playing and, um, you know, and it sounded good. It's interesting because that night, you know, there, there were probably 30 different artists that were performing at the Billboard Awards, right? During the night, only two of them actually played live. Everybody else was lip syncing. Lip -syncing. Yeah. So we played live, um, even though our label was begging us to just, hey, well, perhaps you should just, just not take a chance of sounding crap that night and you know because that can kill your career yes just go out and lip sync you know and we were like no 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 no. we, we play live every night you know with, we'll go ahead and play and then brooks and dunn the, the country artists they they actually they were awesome too they sounded amazing but everybody else was out lip syncing wow yeah 